Imagine it's 1956 and you lead a chapter of the NAACP in the heart of Jim Crow country. Two years ago, the Supreme Court struck a lethal blow to segregation in its landmark Brown versus Board of Education decision, ruling that public schools could no longer be segregated on the basis of race. You're invigorated by the ruling, but you're also fully aware of how much work there is to do until the fundamental American promise that all men and women are created equal truly applies to every American. But just this morning, you received a letter from the state government. They're ordering you to hand over the list of donors to your NAACP chapter, claiming the authority to comb through your records, including your members and financial supporters' names and addresses. This is, of course, an intimidation tactic, and a scary one at that, for your supporters' physical safety and for your group's viability. You know that if your supporters' names are revealed, they'll be intimidated, harassed, or worse, until they're silent until they stop giving. So, you stand your ground. Two years later, the Supreme Court will hand down a decision in your favor. That decision, NAACP versus Alabama, recognized the God-given right of every American to free association as enshrined in the First Amendment. It also established a very high bar that states must overcome in order to force a nonprofit to release its list of members or supporters. Keeping donations private is a way to protect religious freedom, advance the common good, and allow the diversity of ideas. The freedom to give privately is one reason why Americans have been among the world's most charitable givers. But in March of 2012, California set out to change all that, ordering all nonprofits that want to fundraise in the state to provide all their major supporters information every year, even if the state had no suspicion that those groups had done anything wrong. That directive applies across the board, from donors who support pro-life advocacy groups to those who support groups on the other side of the abortion issue and to every other cause under the sun. The threat to donor information isn't just theoretical. As a federal judge found at the conclusion of a trial, the attorney general's office leaks private donors' information like a sieve. And California threatens no punishment if employees, contractors, or even summer interns download, email, or print supporters' names and addresses and then disclose them publicly. Government should not be in the business of tracking and publicizing your charitable giving or anyone else's. That puts donors' livelihoods and lives at risk. It also raises the stakes so dramatically that only the most ardent supporter would dare give to a cause they believed in. Some bullies are all too eager to make life miserable for their ideological opponents. That's a tragic reality Brendan Eich learned firsthand when he was forced out of his position as CEO of Mozilla Firefox because he gave his own money to support Proposition 8, which a majority of California voters passed in 2008 to affirm the definition of marriage as between one man and one woman. What was true in 1956 is still true today, especially in a moment defined by fracture and polarization. Without donor privacy, the freedom of every American to support causes they believe in is an empty guarantee. And that brings us to Thomas More Law Center, a nonprofit organization based in Michigan that defends and promotes religious freedom and family values and the sanctity of human life. As with many high-profile nonprofits, some of Thomas More Law Center's supporters, clients, and employees have faced intimidation, death threats, hate mail, and boycotts. At one point, there was even an assassination attempt by ideological opponents. And that was before California started to demand that all charities that fundraise in the state hand over their donor information. So, with the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, Thomas More Law Center asked the Supreme Court to reaffirm what it ruled way back in 1958, that every American is free to support causes they believe in without fear of harassment or intimidation. The court has agreed to hear the case, with oral arguments likely to take place in the spring of 2021. Thomas More Law Center knows that the stakes are high. Their work is too important to give up. They want just one thing to be able to count on the government to protect their donors' confidentiality according to the Constitution's promises. Freedom to support groups and issues without fear of harassment and intimidation is freedom worth fighting for. Find out what you can do to stand for freedom. Visit www.adflegal.org slash standforfreedom.